Welcome to the Thornton Review. The show designed with you in mind. If it's important to you, it's important to us. We want to thank our sponsors, Ida Gates with her new trademark and the Soul Royals Band. On today's show, we're going to meet some of the band members from the Soul Royals. I've known Charles for about five years. Charles and I, as you know, produced this show together. But today we're going to find out more about his band, the Soul Royals, and meet some of his band members. But first, we're going to have a moment of silence for the victims and families of the tragic shooting in the Nashville school on March 27th. So let's please bow our heads for a moment of silence. So we have some band members from the Soul Royals in the studio with us today. So I'd like to introduce Howard Griffin, sing singer, mm -hmm. Melvin Archie, singer and keyboard, and of course, Charles Thornton, trombone and keyboard. So let's start with original members. So who in the room is an original member of the Soul Royals? I am an original member of the Soul Royals band. I am. And the Soul Royals Band was started in 1967. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name out the original members of the Soul Royals Band. The ori original members is yours truly, Charles Thornton, uh, Willie Johnson, a trumpet player. He's local. An uh, individual by the name of Thurman Archie, trumpet. Uh, Tommy Owens, lead guitar. Donna Tucker, drums. Herbert Rankins saxophone, Raymond Crane, bass guitar, and Tom Lee, uh, vocalist. And there were different iterations, but those were the original, the original members. members. So, so yes. we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we'll learn more about the Soul Royals and meet some of the members of the band. There is no government-funded program that can guide a man's thoughts. Only God can do that. Take a trip down memory lane and relive the magic. The legendary Soul Royals Band, Pensacola's own from the 60s and 70s, is hosting their 55th reunion Saturday, June 24th at Pensacola High School Auditorium. This event is for the entire family, featuring live music, singing, and entertainment by former band members. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. You don't want to miss this one. Advanced tickets are available now, available online at eventbrite.com. The Soul Royals Band Reunion. Acto Snack Shack, 4027 North Davis Highway. And from members of the Soul Royals Band for only $25. $35 at the door. For more info, call 850-341-7633. Relive the magic with one of the greatest bands of the 60s and 70s. The legendary Soul Royals. Saturday, June 24th at Pensacola High School Auditorium.
The Soul Royals are a local R&B band established right here in Pensacola in 1967. The band was well known during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. Band members participated in the annual citywide marches and meetings. The Soul Royals also took part in helping to organize protest marches against incidents of race discrimination. The band donated time and talents to perform at local fundraising events to help raise money to cover legal fees for those adversely affected by their participation in the movement. Through the years, the Soul Royals had numerous band members coming and going, and each band member has his or her own story. The band created a lifelong bond between young men and women with a common interest in music, who not only made an impact on their lives, but also made a mark on Pensacola history. Today, we're going to take a trip down memory lane to find out how the Soul Royals got started and meet a few of the band members. So I'd like to just go around the table and introduce our band members. So Harold, let's start with you. Okay. What year did you join the band and what was your position? Okay, I joined the band in 1973 uh, as a lead singer uh, for the band mm -hmm. and also background vocals as well. My sister and I, we were a tag team uh, pair. Okay, so was your sister in the band also? Oh yeah, Lydia, yeah. She was the okay. featured lead, a lead uh, female singer for Earth at that point in time. And how long were you in the band? Uh, until 77. Mm -hmm. about four years when I left and go off to college at Alabama a and mm -hmm. I was in the band up until that point in time. And then another group took over after, after we took over, after we left. Were you in high school at the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, what, yeah, yeah. What grade were you in? Uh, 11th grade. Okay. Yeah. So you were in the 11th grade when you started the Soul Royals uh -uh. in 1973. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And... Uh, and you were the lead singer yeah, right. and backup singer. Uh -huh. Did you participate in any of the marches and fundraisers? What 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 did you? What was the band doing? Oh that yeah. Time? Oh, oh, back in the day, we were outlet for a lot of the uh, young people growing up. When I say outlet, I mean a place where they can go and and have a good time, listen to live entertainment, listen to us, entertain them. And uh, that was at the uh, Pensacola Municipal Auditorium at that time downtown. Oh, wow. At the full of uh, Palafox Street, and um, when I joined as a lead singer, Melvin was still on board. Melvin Archer, he was, he and I were a, a duo. Mm -hmm. and we would, we would do a lot of songs together, mm -hmm. uh, duets and stuff like that. So, yes, ma'am, we did. We, uh, we participated with the, with the, uh, the uh, civil rights movements, um, and we were mandated to do stuff like that because that, that was the time of our, you know, of our life, man. I mean, yes. people were really coming, coming into their own. Things were opening up. Integration was just starting in 1960s, you know, and um, so yeah, yes, yeah, ma'am. Matter of fact, we I think we were the first uh, predominantly black. Well, we was all black back then yeah. that uh, did an all white prom. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that all white oh, wow. school. Yeah, that's, uh -huh. that's good. Yeah. yeah, man, and that was a big highlight for us too. But but we were a versatile band. We played all types of music. Mm -hmm. We did white artists as well as black artists as well. So mm -hmm. we were received in the Gulf Coast, man. Had a great time. It really was. That's amazing. That's good. So, Melvin, yes. Melvin Archie, you were a singer and keyboard. Yes. So, what year did you join the band? It was in 68, 1968. Okay, so it was right after the band started. Yeah, right after the band started. Uh -huh. I was friends as a drummer. I always went to the same high school. What high school did y'all go to? Washington, Booker T. Washington. So, all three of you went to Booker T. Okay. No, I went to, I went to Woodham. Oh, you went to Woodham. Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. Mighty Titan. We, we didn't know that at the time. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the vehicle that you went, yeah, that's a joke. That's a joke. We was all in, in, in high school. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all of us took music in, in high school. So our manager at the time was a school teacher. Okay. You know, Charlie East at Pensacola High School. Mm -hmm. So we had that background, and he uh, maintained that we had to maintain our grades, everything. and when you talk about civil rights, who was the first group was able to go to different schools. We got out of school by paying at different schools and having concerts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just hung around the band. The drummer was my best friend, so they used to rehearse. I'd be, I just got in the way all the time. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Miss East, they was rehearsing one night and they was doing a particular song, The Impressions, I'm So Proud. And they had a high part in there. And they having difficult hitting it. And I was in the back corner singing it to myself. And Musty East heard me sing it. And that's how 
I got in the group. That's good. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. I'm still in the group. Yeah. Absolutely. Once you're in, you're always in. Yeah. There's no yep. way out. Yeah, right. So Ross forever. forever. Yeah. I, I would think it's so Ross forever. Yeah. That's one of my mottos. Yeah. yeah. So, so Charles, you've been in the band since 1967. You were one of the very first founding members of the band. Right. Uh, and what's, what high school did you go to? I went to what Washington the, High. Washington oh, Washington High. Okay. Washington High. And... Uh, and the way it started is uh, I always like to go back to the church. Myself, I played in the, I played in the church band beginning at the age of 13. I played trombone, and, and I think a lot of people know the story. I was, uh, I'm making $3 a night playing in the church, the Church of God in Christ and all. We, we, would, go, we would go to different, <laughs> we, would, we would, Church of God in Christ, and we would go to different cities, Caryville, Jacksonville, uh, uh, all over the place, Fort Walton, and uh, and so finally I got a job and I and uh, I'm doing some work when I was about 14 or something, and uh, and and I started listening to the transistor, bought me a transistor radio, and I just got tired of going to church, so I I got this guy Willie Johnson, and uh, and I had my horn and he had a horn and we were both played in the drum and bugle corps. Sheriff had a drum and bugle corps at that time, and we got together and uh, we said let's let's start a band. So we had a party one night, and we started a band, and we went and got the, uh, 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 the Thurman Archie, Tommy Owen, Donald Tucker, and all. And uh, So you got the other band members. You yeah, invited them to play with you. That, where, where were you practicing? We were, we were practicing at that time. The guy, Raymond Crane, had a house right up there uh, uh, on uh, Davis Street mm -hmm. at the time. That was our first practice place. We was uh, somewhere between Wright and LaRue. Uh, it was a greenhouse on uh, over there. No, we practiced on Tommy Owen porch because yes. Tommy Owen, Tommy Owen's house was across the street from Raymond Crane. Raymond Crane stayed across, but we would actually practice on Tommy Owen's front porch. Do you remember that building? Yeah, people outside dancing. It, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We practiced oh, right really? up there. Yeah. Just people walking down the street yeah, with it, your it, it turns into, it turned to a, a block concert. party. Yeah, yeah. Block. I remember, I remember yeah, a song right. that was out back then called "Grazing in the Grass." Yeah. Hugh, Hugh Masquerilla yeah. and all that. So we. We started out on Tommy Owen's front porch, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Raymond Crane, I think, was was playing bass. I don't play yeah, you playing bass. So and you were just you were practicing like on a regular basis, just mm -hmm. having fun, right? And then how did you actually start getting gigs? Uh, at that particular time, uh, uh, the, the school, the people started hearing about us, so mm -hmm. so they wanted us to play the DCT ball because mm -hmm. before then, we was actually in school when you had a band. And only bass, they didn't have strings instruments like no. a bass guitar, lead guitar. You had horns. Brass. And for the bass, you actually had the tuba. Tuba. Uh -huh. The tuba would play yeah. the bass part. So so we actually had a, 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 a bass player in <laughs> Raymond Crane and some other things. So they wanted us to play the uh, uh, DCT ball. And some kind of way we got up there and uh, we, we played the DCT ball and some other things. This was before we integrated it. Yeah. We were all black at that time, 1967, 68. And from there, uh, Charlie East had a chance to uh, uh, run into yeah. Charlie East and he, he heard us and he saw some potential there because yeah. we were just a ragtag group of uh, uh, young individuals who wanted to play music and uh, who had grew up in the church, and uh, we wanted to expand, and uh, and and, that, and and from there it kind of took off, and eventually we played on my porch, Harold, and Harold, well we could, Harold, well we Harold could. porch, yeah, in my mom and dad garage, <laughs> carport. <laughs> Any, 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 anybody, any, anyone who would open anybody up. Anybody, mama, <laughs> come to their house. Yeah, and there would be a crowd it, because it, it, people knew you'd be playing at our we, porch oh, yeah. or the garage, oh, and so yeah. people would come to listen to you. We practiced throughout uh -huh. the neighborhood, yeah. uh, mainly uh, if someone had a porch or something in the garage. And I, it, it, the ironic thing about it was most of our parents was very uh, Christian-like and, yeah. and loved the Lord, but for some reason they allowed us to to, mm -hmm. to play the music. Yeah. My, my parents in particular, after, uh, you know, they, they, allowed, they allowed us to play the music and yeah. because I, I think it gave them a way to keep an eye on us sure. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And, and tell they them knew how where you were and they knew you were doing something productive rather yeah. than out. And, and good music too back in that day. Yeah. It, it was not the vulgarity, no, with no cussing, it's mm -hmm. not like that back in, like they do now, you know, so the music was good, good music. A lot of love yeah. ballads, a lot of love ballads and uh, uh, you had that, 
what we call now funky music. We we was a little bad at funky music. And we had another band that played with us at coming up at the same time called Generation Gap. Yeah. They would play more uh you call psychedelic we would call that, but it more uh fast up tip up stuff and we like uh the temptations. We would put on the show. Oh, I really love blues. the temptations. So yeah. we, we were we were balladeers and everything. Mm -hmm. So we was cute, you couldn't tell us nothing. <laughs> yeah. We were we were the smooth band. Yeah, we, we were, were the smooth, we, we yeah. wore the smooth band. Had the outfits and 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 played all of the smooth songs and and generation got there. Well, we would have battle in the bands all the time, and uh, what 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 they would do, it, it was just a total opposite. So that's what made it uh, real good. Made it real real good. We got energy yeah. off each other. Yeah. It, 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 matter of fact, we 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 became known as a battle band, and we would have every month. It turned bigger and bigger. We didn't realize how what we was doing for each other because it was a battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so and but the thing about it, everybody was serious about the music. We had real musicians. We weren't just making noise. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, then mm -hmm. we as we go into a group, we start respecting each other for each other's talent. And we grow up. We're still growing off each other today. Yeah, see today, yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, some of the generation gaps are going to be at our be at, show. At, at, at the show. They could be joining us. Generation Gap was one of our rival bands, good band in this city. It too, was man. a lot of, excuse me, it was a lot of groups that came up off of the stems of Soul Roy stuff. Like we had bands starting Wedgewood, they're springing up all over the place. Warrington. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah just Lincoln Park. Up, mm -hmm. But thank God we had the longevity. You know? mm -hmm. Everybody, like I got out of the group, man, after I became a grown man and started traveling and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it was a home for a lot of folks, and if people would come here, play. When they came with Freaker Center, Cub Center, who was the first groups that came in there and did concerts and played Cub Center. I remember when they put the first brick up when it was brand new. I remember that. And then uh, we would be the, the opening act. So, how many people were in the band when you did that, the Cub uh, Center? Uh, to, the last time I counted, it was about nine. I think we had. Uh, we had three singers, uh, and that was our style. Uh, we had two, two males and a female. That was three. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, a four-piece rhythm section, which yeah. was a bass, a lead, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a drums, a drama, mm -hmm. and a keyboard player. Mm -hmm. and, and we had three horns. Mm -hmm. We had we had three horns. That was like a ten-piece band, right? Yeah, yeah. It about was. 10 it was we had three horns: mm -hmm. a trombone, a, a saxophone and a trumpet. Mm -hmm. so, we, so, we had, so when you had three singers, one person would be the lead singer, and probably depending on which song it was, exactly. like maybe exactly. one guy would sing a song that, you know, yeah. that would be his song, and then maybe you had another a song that you would sing, and you'd be back up for somebody else. Is that how y'all would do it? Yeah, I'm but also, yeah, to... yeah, we did stuff like by Sam and Dave. You ever heard of Sam and Dave? I've... Yeah, that was a duo, that was a male duo group, uh, mm -hmm. and they were tough, man. They had a lot of good songs out. James and Bobby Purified, you ever heard of them? Another group. Yeah, another group that was out. So we, Mel and I, we would do songs by them and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. We would have 45 minute sets and 15 minute breaks. So mm -hmm. when we did a show, the band would come on first, be instrumental, and they had a couple songs. Then we had a thing called Showtime. That's when we would come out, the singers. Mm -hmm. And okay. the lead vocal, like I said, we were singing a song, which everybody led, led a song on the, on, on the, the vocal part, but it was the, the excitement of a 45 minute set with the band. They they did some things too. They they were jamming, get everybody relaxed. And by the third set, folks that had a good time, so we come on and have a show. So we had two parts of the, of the show where people can enjoy themselves just dancing, then they could sit down and enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Would y'all charge a fee? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That was an admission <laughs> fee, yeah. We, we didn't charge the, uh, whatever organization we were playing for, because most of the time there were community organizations like the Delta, the AKAs, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Elks Club. They would have, they would, they would really rent the uh, auditorium out mm -hmm. and uh, so ask us to play. So they would collect the money yes, and then uh, give you a yeah. share, and then they would keep some of it for proceeds to help the people who needed legal uh, help. From well, the, yeah, yeah, most times, like people got burnt out. I remember several times we did things with people yeah, who had house no. fires. You oh, know, yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah. so it was a charity. Thing. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, we did a lot of that too, as well. And mm -hmm. proceeds raised, you know, we used to give that family. Absolutely. And really, this is what this I let Charles talk. Really, this is what this concert is all about. 
we're not uh, looking for revenue. We're playing, right. Go ahead, Charles. You tell them about the plan. Well, I'm just going to say, uh, uh, one of our band members, Tommy Owen, he really knows the, uh, the history of our contribution to the movement. We had Tommy there, and uh, it was kind of like before Harrow time and all. We, we were involved early on mm -hmm. in, in the movement, and uh, uh, one day we'll get, we'll get Tommy on to tell that story and what and we did. Like we, did take, we did take up money to help because there was issues that was going on, and there used to be a lot of meetings at St. John the Vine yeah. and this and that. Mm -hmm. And because our band manager was local, and sometimes we even did uh, uh, charity events, and we were, we were a great contributor because you got to remember the band started in '67, yes. and and full integration. It was a if, very turbulent time. Oh, yeah. right. But you're, yeah. you it, guys were very positive. You were contributing to to society, even in high school. You were doing something positive, and industrious. It, it was during that period from uh, say '65, '67 up until about '74, '75. They call that the uh, the black and black. Black and Proud era. It was during that time where you had all the songs. That, and, and all the good songs. All, yeah, all the songs. <laughs> empowerment, and, 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 and yeah. empowerment type of song. Not, mm -hmm. in, not to incite, but right. to motivate, you know, to, 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 and, uh, and, and we participated in that. Yeah. But we, because we had an a educator yeah. who was our, who was our band member, mm -hmm. he made sure that our main focus was on education yes sir and and as well as music mm -hmm. and not and, and and doing things uh uh the right way mm -hmm. we we didn't want uh, we, we didn't want folks out doing things we wanted them to come to the dance mm -hmm. because it was safe it was a comfort right. zone yeah. mm -hmm. we didn't you know if, if you're angry if you're upset then you do good at the house you make good grades and let's dance the night away come down to the auditorium yes. and Stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. that that was that was that was my. I think that was our main contribution to the movement was we kept folks off the streets. Yeah. They they, they, they was they was having such a good time at the. Uh, uh, you could walk on on a Friday yeah. night. Yeah. It, it, it's downtown. You could you could feel the atmosphere of the electricity because it's Friday night. You know, swords and play down the Muskogee Church, and parents would bring loads of kids mm -hmm. and drop them off at the municipal turn and come pick them back. It never was the ruckus. It's never you know. it was always starting in the in we didn't realize that what we were doing and what was going out of this thing because if the kids start imitating us what we was doing, they started the little groups where they would come on stage and try to dance and the place would be so packed that people would kick this back door open. You about six of them stop rush in. Stop yeah. <laughs> about six of them rush in. So we had. Uh, the but it was structured time. and organized, yes. and it was important that y'all had good grades and that you practiced and and keep kept up. Oh yeah. Your oh yeah. That was mandatory. And, Mr. East mandatory. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you your grades were bad, he set you down. He and you're definitely yeah. professional <laughs> musicians. Yeah. So we're going to take a commercial break. And again, I would like to thank our sponsors, Ida Gates with her new trademark and the Soul Royals Band. Take a trip down memory lane and relive the magic. The legendary Soul Royals Band, Pensacola's own from the 60s and 70s, is hosting their 55th reunion Saturday, June 24th at Pensacola High School Auditorium. This event is for the entire family, featuring live music, singing, and entertainment by former band members. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event. You don't want to miss this one. Advanced tickets are available now, available online at eventbrite.com. The Soul Royals Band Reunion, Pacto Snack Shack, 4027 North Davis Highway, and from members of the Soul Royals Band for only $25, $35 at the door. For more info, call 850-341-7633. Relive the magic. 
with one of the greatest bands of the 60s and 70s, the legendary Soul Royal Saturday, June 24th at Pensacola High School Auditorium. Great Change Cleaning Service is Pensacola's premier housekeeping service. We specialize in residential, short-term rentals, and small office cleaning. We want to get your home or office fabulously clean at a reasonable price. Call Great Change Cleaning Service so we can set up a time to get your home or office Great Change Clean. So Charles, can you tell us when the concert is going to be and how do people get their tickets? I want to know how to get my ticket. Okay. The concert will be Saturday, June 24th, uh, 2023. It's going to be at Pensacola High School Auditorium. Doors open at 7 p.m. Showtime is at 8. Uh, you can Currently, you can go to eventbrite.com, and when you go to Eventbrite, just, just punch in Soul Roars Band Reunion. And the tickets will come up to $25. Um, uh, you can go to Facto Snack Shack here in Pensacola on, at 4027 North Davis Highway uh, and uh, pick up the tickets for $25. Uh, you, you can get them from any member of the Soul Royals Band. And uh, by any member, all that means is that if you know any member of the band, you see them anywhere, yes. uh, you can just you can touch them. Uh, you know that phone number, you can call them. Uh, if you want to call the Soul Royals, they actually have a phone number, 850-341-7633. You can call that number. Or you can email the Soul Royals uh, at gmail.com, and you can get your tickets that way. And uh, so it, it just, Or you can call WRNE or, or any of the local channels around here and get your, get your tickets. Okay, so you can email the Soul Royals at, at gmail.com. You can email for questions, uh, additional information, uh, anything. You can uh, email. And we have a website also. It's called uh, uh, the Soul Royals.com. The Soul Royals.com. What we wanted to do, we wanted to make tickets, the availability of tickets, easy and accessible. That way, uh, it, you know, if you really want to get a ticket, you know, have no trouble you, you have no trouble uh, uh, getting a ticket. And and uh, sometimes, you know, you can go to Eventbrite, but if you go to Eventbrite, there is a, a cost associated with that. I think there's a handling fee at Eventbrite, but you, for any member, uh, you can, it's $25. But so it at, might be better to email the Soul Royals at gmail.com and ask for your tickets that way. Uh, either way, some folks like to go online because yeah. th they don't mind paying. They want to discourage Eventbrite. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, some of them like to go online, uh, but but either way, you can, you can you can get your tickets. So aside from great music that people are going to get at this concert, what do the proceeds go to? Do the proceeds for the oh the proceeds? The oh, you're talking about the proceeds, and there is a uh, uh, what we have is that. After expenses, because this is uh, this is a, a humo humongous project, mm -hmm. and and somewhat uh, yeah, there's a uh, lot of effort being put uh, into and, 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 and a lot of finances care. going into it. So once we pay uh, uh, the expenses and all, and, and we've sent some letters out, and we're hoping that we can get some sponsors. And anybody want to be a sponsor, they can contact any member of the Soul Royals as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we, we do have a booklet where you can actually get a sponsorship. Because our goal is, because we were so blessed as young folks, teenagers and all, our main goal is to raise enough money 
to pay the bills because you always have to pay the bill. And once you pay and and once you pay the bill, we want to hand out a scholarship. Yeah, uh, either scholarship. either scholarships to to young individuals either in high school. Uh, the early stages of college, freshmen yes. in college, and we want that to be whether they play an instrument, a vocalist. It doesn't matter because yeah. we 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 have musician and we have vocalists as well. And and the key thing is uh, is uh, to, to to make sure that there's a, a up and coming group of soul roars, but even though that may not be their name, but just to make sure that the music continues, yeah. keep the music yeah. alive. So you did so much for so many people back in the day. Now you're having this reunion for a scholarship for students to further their music career, or their singing career. That's, that's, that's commendable. It. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It really is, and that's the key thing because if you look at it, most of us were like 15, 16, yeah. mm -hmm. 17, and they're, they're, and we had help. There are folks that reached out mm -hmm. and, and done certain things for us, and we want to make sure that. Uh, uh, to 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 that of saying, say who, who much is given, much is expected, uh, much is required, yeah. much is required, and we want to uh, we want to make sure we do that. That's the key thing. At this point in time, most of us are somewhat successful and secure in our own right. So it's it's not about us per se, but it is about us from a legacy standpoint. But it's more about the younger generation inspiring them because there are so many things going on yes. in our community and and uh, there's a lot know, of hindrances yeah yeah so so you <laughs> yeah, know so the music yeah. and the music was good for us and uh, and, and it, it was an outlet it kept you structured it gave you a reason to make good grades it 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 created camaraderie it mm -hmm. created lifelong bonds oh yeah and, and just and think women. And one reason we're going to Pensacola High because we wanted to be number one. We uh, one thing we played at Pensacola High School. Oh, we God. actually that was one of our main yeah, venues. They have a great auditorium at, too. So. At, sure do, yeah. <laughs> and, nice. a, and another reason is because uh, uh, we wanted to be family oriented. Mm -hmm. Everyone, everybody come. Everyone can Mom, come. Dad, you so you know the the, the 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 older, the senior citizen, the uh, the middle aged person. Uh, the young person, mm -hmm. it's a family-oriented event, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be very, very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm want, I want the band members to, mm -hmm. I want Harold and Melvin to tell you a little bit more about, about uh, yeah, the I'd music. Like, I'd like to know about the music and the band members. Okay. Like, I'd like to know about the band members who are going to be at the reunion, and I'd like to know about what you're doing, like what you've done since high school. Uh, in your life and your careers. Okay, well, as it relates to the concert um, or the dance, uh, Emil Campbell is one of one of our local uh, musicians who's still uh, out in the circuit. He's still in the business. Mm -hmm. He's out of Minnesota, and he's with the Prince uh, Prince uh, aggregation. And so he'll be here. He has a group called the X Factor, and they'll yes. be coming from North, uh, Las Vegas. All the way. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah they're coming in. They'll be so coming people are traveling from all over for this reunion. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, it's all overseas. Big, Germany. We got people from oh, Germany wow. coming in. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's one of the group. And we got some of the guys who, was in, uh, who, are, who are professionals. Ernest uh, Walker. Ernest Walker, uh, saxophonist. Jazz. He'll Sammy. be here. Sammy Goodson uh, yeah. out of Atlanta, Georgia. He'll be here. Herbert uh, Walker, I mean Herbert uh, Rankins, Rankins. Yeah. he's one of our saxophone players, uh, he's out of Georgia, he'll be here as well. A lot of the old St. Uh, Soul Rolls are coming in, so we're excited about that. Lydia, she'll be coming in from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, we're excited about her coming to be a part. And then, even from the Generation Gaps, uh, Rosemary Williams yes, and Teresa Middleton. Yes. Um, so we've got Brenda. some women coming. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. exciting. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. they're local ladies. They'll be here, but they will have that uh, generation gap group. And they're gonna be singing with us because we got some beautiful songs. Good, a lot of good harmony going forward. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that as it relates to uh, to the concert. That, 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 that you, dance you, you would have had a good time at rehearsal last night. Yeah, we had a we had a we had a great rehearsal last night. We should have uh, had the camera crew and microphones. <laughs> <laughs> we don't reveal anything. We're not going. We're not going to do this time. No, no, <laughs> no. Keep it all on the rail. And uh, we also have uh, what uh, goes on at band rehearsal stage. Stay in the band, band band. You, you got it. You'll be good soon. We also have a, 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 a professional R and B singer who, who's, who's a member of the Soul Rolls. Yeah. Will Easley. Yeah, Will Easley. Will, uh -huh. Will, Will, Will Easley. 
uh, he he's a professional R&B singer. Yeah. We have uh, Neil Randall. Yeah. Uh, he he's he's one of our trumpet players. Spent, spent a, a lot of his time uh, mm-hmm. at Gun Power, so he 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 will be doing some things, and uh, mm-hmm. it just uh, it, it's just that foundation that was laid back then. If we look at a lot of our members, it, it, it almost uh, as if uh, that foundation carried us through. I'm telling you, music. Music stimulates that's it. That's it. stimulates a lot of energy and it stimulates and it's good the, for the brain. brain. Yes. And, and, yeah. You know what? And, and back to the soul rock. We had three iterations of soul rock. The, the original group with Charles and them, and There's then three with, generations right here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's then there was great. a group that, yeah. that I came in with. Then there was a group after me, Mill came in with, and all of us, most of us, are still here, still and still and still living. Mm-hmm. And so uh, uh, a lot of them, we're gonna be doing that that era. 60s, 70s, and 80s coming up for them, and we're excited about it. Wow. Everybody excited about it. So that's another good thing about Soul Raw. It was three iterations of it. So even though it's 55 years, I'm not quite that old, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Don't say a thing. Oh, go or, go what amazes me is uh, I, I sometimes I'm a, I walk around town. I go to different places in town. I have people come up to me and say, say you know so and so, and they say say he says. He played with the Soul Raw. Uh, uh, somebody may say they play with the Soul Raw, and I just and 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 I be like, dang, you know, and and and, and I can't tell nobody you didn't play with the Soul Raw yeah, because because so <laughs> if you got on the stage, uh, you, some people just I know folks all the time. They say, well, I know somebody they play with the Soul Raw. Yeah. So there are folks out there who may have spent the night or two on the stage. Yeah, with with us, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once a soul roar, always a soul roar. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's great to see him back, too. Michael Houston was one good to yeah. see him. The drama, man. The drama, Mike. yeah. Mike. Jerome Broughton, another yeah. percussionist drama. He had went to school, too. Uh, uh, Bethune Cookman. Yeah, Bethune yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in that, that group, uh, too, man. Uh, uh, another thing about the soul roars is that prior to, and Melvin, I want you to tell them about the 506 oh. later on, but I'm going to say this. Prior to the soul roars, most of the entertainment was kind of stagnant and in place yeah. on Belmont in the villa. So if you wanted to be entertained as a young person in high school, uh, 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 something like that, and you was underage, or what, and uh, then you had nowhere to go uh, unless you tried to sneak into yeah. one of the clubs, the bunny club, yeah. or you kind of yeah. go out like that. But the, the soul <laughs> was took it off the blocks and took it out to the community. We didn't ask to get them to come to Bear Mountain Develop. We say we're gonna come to you. Yeah. Wherever you at, wherever you want the show. And that's what the parents and that's what the people liked about it. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to go to Bear Mountain Develop. Mm-hmm. Nothing was wrong with that but because the, the younger folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was grown folks down there. Yeah. And, and we gave the young people's uh, uh, somewhere to go in Melbourne. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about the, our, our time at the 506 yeah, and the, some of the stuff? Well, really, I, I kind of, that's a really blessing time for me. Like I said, I didn't realize what was going on. The 506 brought big acts. Uh, so that Tanks. was a place, that was a venue where people... Were, okay. yeah. Which is nice an office, but it's right across the street from Five Sisters. You had Five okay, Sisters yeah. was... Uh, uh, the music store. Gus's. Gus's music mm-hmm. store. On top of it was the radio station of WBOP. Okay. Across the street was some bee bread company which you could stand out and you had no money, you could stand outside and smell bread all day. <laughs> <laughs> he could smell it. Oh, I bet it smelled good. And then right beside it on the other corner was the bunny club. Yeah. Around walk around the corner, bunny club had a restaurant where you eat. I mean that. Mm-hmm. Then you had you go to the next place. You go where you took pictures and with your girlfriend and stuff. Had backdrop, backdrop. Then right. you had the Sabres Club. The five hundred six had three clubs. They had the lounge. They had the Stardust Room. That's for local groups play. Then they bring Tyrone Davis, Joe mm-hmm. Tex, Jane Brown. Mm-hmm. Well, we was lucky to be the opening act. Wow, we was the That's house. Cool. We was the house band. Yeah, for for all of them. And mm-hmm. they were singing Joe Tex. I said to tell the story and let it go real quick. Joe Texner was staying at the Holiday Inn on 29. Mm-hmm. Right then. So they came in for sound check. I went across the street to Blues restaurant. Most of the blues was there all the time. You talking about the street, you didn't go, you didn't have no shirt on, no shoe, you coming out talking crazy, you was out the door. 
real fast. Yeah. And Mr. Boo was only about four feet tall. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't take no mess. Right. But anyway, uh, Joe texted him went to do a sound check. So when they went back to the hotel, somebody had broken the room and took all this stuff. So the hotel gave them their uniform. So when the show came, the, the whole band was like the green and black uniform with holiday the end written on this shit. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, though. And uh, one more. Those are good nights. We had, uh, had this bit, in the studio got me started. Uh, <laughs> they had uh, King Floyd. King Floyd was here, and we was playing. I opened up for King Floyd, too. And I was sitting there, this had a lower level, and then I had this stop, there's this ballroom, and the top level, then the first joke I could see, they had a back bar right there, and I was sitting in this chair here, and I looked, and I saw David Ruffin come in the door with the temptation he had on his shirt on. Wow. I didn't realize, though, but we would we were get a chance there, and they treated us I was young. I had to have, they had to watch me. Tom Owen had to watch me. The rest of them were old enough to run around. Tom used to get mad because he had to watch me because I was younger. <laughs> but I used to sneak off all the time. Yeah. But uh, uh, it was a big experience. I go in there, posters and all. I wish a lot of stuff I had kept from memory mm -hmm. and build stuff. Cause it, it didn't realize how, how, how important it was because all these artists now and people still so say, I can't stop the rain on my window. <laughs> Yeah, so they got a chance to meet all those stars and everything, and they treated us just like one little bit shot. So it just they was about the music and everything, mm -hmm. and they would talk to us. Mm -hmm. King for a drummer, they would tell us guys what you're doing and everything. So mm -hmm. we had, it, and even the older guys back then, you had other older guys and stuff that saw you doing something, they would spin you out. Young kids don't have that today. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to. And it's so important that. to get back to that. We need to get back to basics with mm -hmm. our youth. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it going. Like to, had a I, I remember hanging, going to the five hundred six and being in there or something, and I already knew that it, I forget. I forget the, the the person's name, but he was like the uh, uh, security. This but, your man in the back. No, no. This was another guy. I forget his name. I can't think of it. But he, he was like a deputy sheriff, part time deputy sheriff. But but they would like keep us in check because oh, yeah. I want we would I would go in there and want to be grown sometimes yeah, you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying and talk a little noise <laughs> and, 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 talk, and, and they would actually walk out to your car and just tell you to cool off and yeah. do this and do that because they made sure those the, oh, those older you know, they made sure they knew we were mu musicians up and coming musicians and uh, and they made sure that uh, uh, even yeah, up right. in the five oh six uh, Oliver his name was. Uh, Ed Lee Oliver. Ed Lee Oliver. Mm -hmm. Ed, Ed, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, His yeah, name was yeah. Ed Lee Oliver. Yeah. Ed, 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 Ed Lee oh, wouldn't let me. Ed Lee wouldn't let me. I thought, you know, I said, I have to put up with enough at the house. Now I got yeah. Ed Lee keeping out. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 of my, one of my better moments, I remember the 506. And um, when we come off, I remember hearing the band say, Ooh, y'all are good. And that just really pumped me up. Say, yeah, man, y'all got boys sound like wrong, sound like wrong people. You know, like applause. Oh man, it felt like. So that was that was one of the highlights of me. I mean, it really empowered me and and encouraged me. There was those stars would come up to you and tell you, man, you got a good voice. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Stay in it. You know. Well, really got me is the opportunity to do this all over again. And when this that thought came about about doing it, we was just kicking it around, we are seeing each other, passion going and stuff. I mean, we ought to get together and do something. Mm -hmm. What um, a great idea. We, we thought about it. Uh, it. We had always thought about it, but in 2019, and I'm going to have to uh, yeah. uh, 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 right kind of give COVID. credit, <laughs> put the credit, because Will Leadley came up yeah, and, he, and, and he said, you wanna have and, and, and he wanted, 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 why don't we get together and, and have a reunion? And this was 2019, so we we Four looked at years it. years later, here and, and, you are. And we looked at a date, and COVID hit. Yeah. We had set that date to be May of 20, 2020. 2020. Right in the middle of COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 during and, the lockdown. <laughs> and I remember the three of us, mm -hmm. Harold, Melvin, and myself. We met at Dennis mm -hmm. in March of 2020. And at that time, uh, we didn't know, realize at that time when, when it really sunk in mm -hmm. yeah. that we were going to have to cancel the event. Yeah. And we actually put it off. 
Yeah. And uh, and then we 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 start meeting uh, uh, last year, and uh, and I, I believe we're and, and the good Lord allowed us an opportunity yeah, for a reason. Yeah. To, to, yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. And, and 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 we like to say that uh, uh, you know whatever works out works out for the good. Mm -hmm. It worked out for the good, and now we 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 really excited. He's allowed us another opportunity, and we just want the folks to come out and kind of relive yeah. the magic. And I was on the, I, I was on the, uh, um, I was on the Rick Allison show yesterday, and uh, and uh, I, I was at WCOA yesterday morning on um, Pensacola Speech. I was, I was on the, and Rick was interviewing me, and we were talking about the uh, Solar Royals. I was telling Rick, I said, you tell the people now, you know, don't think they're just gonna come there and just sit down in the chair and just yeah. just just have your arms sitting there because if you walk in the door. <laughs> Uh, something's gonna move you. You know, yeah. you're gonna pat your feet, you're gonna clap your hands, Definitely. and uh, and from what I understand, these guys are the main musicians here, and and, and on top of the music. From what I understand, there's gonna be some dancing. Is that right oh, here yeah. on the building? Oh yeah. 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 oh yeah, just like it was back in the day. Yeah, ain't no sitting on the wall. Ain't no sitting. No. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on, like you did back then. If I have to come you up know? the stage myself and dance with you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to sit down, there's plenty of seats, but there is some room for dancing. Up. Yeah, yeah. We hope that they do that. I want yeah. you to come and have a good time. And have a good time, and, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some vendors there, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna have some uh, uh, we're gonna have some refreshment, just normal stuff, no no beer and nothing like that. But we'll have some drinks for some people thirsty and all that. Yes. We that have that, and and we're gonna allow our opportunity such as Ernest Walker. If he want to bring some of his CDs or this or that, he can bring that. Willie okay. Easley. Uh, if Willie okay. Easley want to bring a CD or something. If we have someone in our uh, in the band who's successful at something and they want to display their whatever it is, you know, because because most of us, uh, uh, a lot of us are in business now, and some of us are still in music, and a lot of us just want to. Uh, I'm going to okay. celebrate, yeah. One thing, too, we were talking about, remember, guys, we were talking about uh, honoring those educators yeah. uh, that was back in, in, yes. in, our, in our day, like Mr. Charlie East mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. like that, okay, mm -hmm. and other teachers, Ms. Ruby Jack Jackson Gaynor, mm -hmm. uh, tons of them. Uh, and we, so we're, the people, we're asking. The people who influenced you and helped you along and yes. kept you in line. Yes, ma'am. So we have, we're yeah. hoping to have two jumbo trials on each side of the stage. Uh -huh. And it could be a slide presentation. So we're asking, uh, even for some of those people back in the day, you send those pictures Notified. of you when yeah. you were, yeah, of you when you was in high school with your afro, your yeah. afro puffs, your no, miniskirt, or whatever. You know. We have talent shows. We used to have a lot of folks. I, I'm married now, but I met my first girlfriend at a talent show that we used to have talent shows that you come audition for mm -hmm. us. And okay. back then, if it, it was really serious too, they didn't get up and just pity pat. They it was really had some professional dancers. Yeah. And a lot of them go to be mamas and dads. And it's like, yeah, please contact us and come on down and yeah. get involved with us. We got room for everybody. Yeah, so we actually, yeah, we, we're going to be asking, probably send it through the Soul Royals at gmail.com, your picture, a snapshot of you, of your picture, because we're going to have a slide presentation going on. That's what we're hoping to do. It depends on how, how yes. what the response be to that. So, you know, kind of remind everybody. You don't have to have your name on it. Mm -hmm. Just your opinion. It'll be going, while, going on while the music, while the concert is going on, while the dance is going on, you know. So we want to we remember uh, remember those that, that were good to us, educated yes. us, right. as well as us ourselves when our youth, mm -hmm. when our big afros. <laughs> so so if you have that picture with the afro and your high stack shoes. <laughs> Yes, Afro and your bell-bottom jeans, and your bell-bottom bell jeans, and, <laughs> and your long woolly dynamite coat. Yeah. coat. Back then, people didn't. When you go downtown to the courthouse or to some building that had steps, you didn't walk up the steps. You you would go up the steps sideways. They had to. You, 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 <laughs> you didn't walk up the steps. You kind of you kind of done that thing where you. And when you drove your car back then, yeah. and a lot of people missed out on this, you didn't drive like this. You would just have it like a call it. They would call it the gangster lane. Yeah. If you you drive and and and, and, and uh, you know you just, if you remember digging the scene with the gangster lane and all that, and, <laughs> and we we want you to do that. And also, and and I have a solemn solemn moment here. Uh, we're also going to try to do something. I'm just not mentioning this to, yeah. to my band members. You know, we lost Peggy Scott. Yeah. Yeah. We lost Peggy Scott. So we yeah. want to we wanna, uh, 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 right. take, take a moment and just kind of bow our head for just a, a second or two. And on behalf of 
we lost a great singer. Her name was Peggy Scott. So you guys could just give me just a few seconds. Just okay, that's good. But but Peggy Scott, and we may want to do something for her because she she was around when we did, and we we looked up to her. She was she was probably in a position to be. I don't think she was old enough to be. Was she old enough to be our auntie? Yeah, well, I got a chance. Uh, to she, 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 you know, yeah, she could have been. Yeah, yeah. I know one thing. She was, she was very nice, Man, very she was respectful. A good lady. She, she yeah, was very she, encouraging. She, and you probably hear about. It. She was very encouraging she us. Was she one of the teachers. Huh? Uh, no, she, she was a professional singer. She was a professional uh, rhythm and blues singer. Uh huh. Yeah, she was out on the circuit, man, and uh, she never forgot about Pensacola. She loved Pensacola. Always, yeah, she always yeah. recognized Pensacola. That's what I remember about her. Because I remember one time she came to Chicago, and I was living in Chicago at that time, and they she was gonna be at the uh, the, the blues club. They were featuring her that night, and and she was on the radio, and she mentioned her hometown of Pensacola, Florida. And yeah. of course, I got pumped up, and my oh, friends at work heard that name, Pensacola. They thought about, about, about me. So. Yeah, that's right. But Peggy, she never forgot about Pensacola. But she, she did a little of stuff. She played uh, what Papa Don had, uh, James the Bible Purified. It used to be uh, Papa Don's Club right there on, what would you call it? Savante. Yeah, it was yeah, right at Pensacola Junior oh. College now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Pensacola. Uh, oh. But, Oh, oh, you talking about on Garden Street? On Garden Street, yeah. Garden Street, yeah. Garden Street, yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember right across the street was a big old red barn? Right, it's I remember. Country of Western Place. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't believe how the mingling and the music brought the two people together. Mm -hmm. and most, on a good night, the palm trees blowing, and everybody out there having a good time. Yeah. Music is a medicine for whatever ears you. It's a you, uniter. You can't get mad yeah. at somebody, yeah. whether country or western. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, real music. I ain't talking about that crap. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. <laughs> you, you. You know, we realized what was going on, and we realized that there was a movement going around around us. And when we had to engage, we would engage. But at the same time, we knew how important the, the, mu the music was to the overall movement because we wanted to, we wanted our generation to live to see another day. You never forget, but at the same time, That's right. but at the same time, you, 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 you the, the music just, it brings people together. It's educational too. Yeah. It's yeah. educational. It, it, and, and, and there was no it color. It creates camaraderie. No. It, 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 it did. I, I remember the proms. Uh, some of the schools have two bands. Oh, yeah. White band and, and yeah. a black band. And most time we was, yeah, mm -hmm. most time we was in a black band. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we, I mean, it, no 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 violence, no interruption. Everybody stayed there and saw it, enjoyed it, enjoyed the together. Two bands would get together. Yeah, yeah, man, and have a good time, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So we, I remember all that too, as well, man. But one of my fondest memories is that I remember uh, we'd be going down, getting ready to go to the auditorium, and we come down Palo Fox Street, uh, Michelle. And I'm telling you, the lines of people uh, walking, going mm -hmm. to the dance. That's awesome. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, hundreds of them just flocking yeah, down, walking, all they walking down. All the now, where you see all them boats and everything, that wasn't number of people. That first you could you could see, and uh, when yeah. it was over with, you could walk home. Actually, walk home. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, nobody nobody bothered them, man. Yeah, they were yeah. all the way back up to the it's back, amazing. back, back yeah. up to about the stumping ground. You know, well, you know what stumping ground is, but about, <laughs> but old Washington High School. We used to be, yeah. I used to walk all the way, you know. So Charles, do you want to remind everyone how to get their tickets and when and it, where the concert is going yes. to be? Soul Ross Reunion, Saturday, June twenty fourth, and tickets are available at Eventbrite dot com. Just type in Soul Ross Reunion. You can get them here locally, Facto Snack Shack on North Davis Highway here in Pensacola. You can email, uh, you can get them from members of the Soul Roars Band. Email soulroars at gmail.com or you can call 850-341-7633. 850-341-7633. And that number is a, that's a dedicated number for the Soul Roars Band. 850-341. Four one seven six three three, but you 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 all know you you know the members if you know a member yeah. because.
because when we was coming up, uh, to be a member of the Soul Royals, I would love to go visit churches. I had my yeah. church that I grew up in, but but if you have to, I, I would just go to different churches because most people know. But but if you know a, by saying that, I'm just saying that if you know a member of the Soul Royals band, they all have tickets. We we actually have tickets that's uh, available because if you wait. You can wait, but if you wait to the last minute, it's going to cost you ten thirty five dollars. Mm -hmm. And we don't want you to have at to the do door. That. We don't want you to. It's going to a good cause, though. So yeah. it is. Thank you, Miss. Well, Let's as you're talking up. about there church, <laughs> I happen to be minister of music at my church, and I play at a lot of churches. And I just I just played for a revival the other night, and I'm sitting, me and my wife sitting down, and the lady come across to me. She said, "Melvin Archie," I say, "Yes." Well, I'm with my wife always. When I respect my wife, <laughs> yeah. she, she said, don't have an anniversary uh, reunion. I got my ticket, and that was in the church. We, okay. I want to I wanna thank you guys for coming out okay. to, to be with us. The old clock thank on you. the wall okay. says uh, we're going to have to end the show. Wonderful show, it. Harold, Melvin. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Always thank Charles for a great show every time. And I want to thank our sponsors, Ida Gates Trademark and the Soul Royals, and our guests on the show today, Harold Griffin, Melvin Archie, and of course, Charles Thornton for coming on the show. And I want to thank our viewers for watching this episode of the Thornton Review. We air live every other Thursday at 4 p.m. We hope you'll tune in to our next show. Bye-bye.